An exciting day yesterday as voters in four federal ridings across the country cast their ballots for new members of parliament. But despite some lead changes, some crazy pre-election polls, at the end of it all, the head count for each party in the House of Commons stays the same. We start in the East, in Montreal, where Liberal Emmanuel Dubourg was elected to succeed Denis Coderre as the MP for the riding of Barassa. New Democrat Stéphane Morai was never really in the race, but finished a respectable second. But the Bloc Québécois had a dismal showing. Check that out, 13%. In Toronto Centre, two high-profile journalists faced off, but again, the Liberals prevailed in a riding where Bob Ray had most recently been the MP. Now, Toronto Centre has its first ever female MP, Christia Freeland. In Manitoba, Conservative Ted Falk was the first to be declared a winner last night, easily taking the riding of Provencher, where he will succeed Vic Taves. But in the southwestern corner of Manitoba, Liberal Rolf Dinsdale almost pulled off an upset for the ages, losing to Conservative Larry Maguire by just 391 votes in what was a seesaw battle all night that didn't end until well after midnight local time. It's going to be disappointing for people here to have more of the same. And that's someone who speaks for Mr. Harper here in Brandon Soros, rather than having someone who uh, represents them in Parliament. And the kind of secretive, uh, divisive politics we've seen are going to continue on. And I hope uh, two more years of that will be just enough uh, to give us uh, what we need to win in 2015. And so that, of course, is Rolf Dinsdale. And so that is where we start tonight in Manitoba with the coverage of those two battleground Canada elections. We're going to start with Michael Diamond, political consultant, but also a former progressive conservative staffer in Manitoba. So you know the territory well, Michael. And on our program last night, on our special, we were talking about uh, sort of some of the, the local factors going in. You've had sort of the evening to, to sort of consider the results. Conservatives held them, but I don't get the sense that conservatives are exactly patting themselves on the back too, too uh, heartily today. Well, you know, in uh, Brandon Surf, there was definitely a uh, closer race than we've seen typically, even as we were talking last night when the parties were, uh, when there were two right-wing options, they still would get around two-thirds of the vote. So mm -hmm. uh, getting, you know, winning with 44% in that riding is definitely lower than expectations, definitely not something that would have been expected when Merv Tweed announced his uh, surprise retirement. But uh, all things considered, you know, a win's obviously a win, and we saw similar things last year in Calgary Center. So, uh, uh, you know, the factors of the bio election there was uh, you know it's an easy uh, no risk protest vote against the government uh, there was some issues with the local nomination uh, and uh, the uh, liberals managed to find a very very strong candidate quite clearly so those were all factors in Brandon Suris. Uh, as we looked across the four by elections and the vote share of the conservatives it was down everywhere I mean it was silly down in Bourass and Toronto Center conservatives weren't going to win there but I mean they they're barely registered and obviously it was still down in Provence still down in Brandon Suris. and one of the one of the comments made to me by a partisan today was uh, that that win in Brandon Sewers was, was a good one and it took a lot of work for the t Conservatives to pull it off but it's all tactics right now for the Conservatives and no strategy and strategy is what's going to win the government in 2015 you can't do this piece by piece across the country this tactical game well and you know and when you're running a national campaign on national issues that will likely play to uh, the incumbent government strength uh, uh, there were uh, you know on local issues. I think there were some mistakes uh, in Brandon Suris attacking uh, uh, the liberal leader instead of focusing on their very strong uh, local conservative candidate was probably an error. And uh, hopefully they'll learn from that, uh, not only moving ahead into other by-elections, but uh, 2015. And let's talk about the two MPs for a second, because I mean, you, in, Larry McGuire was a provincial uh, MLA. Uh, he worked with uh, uh, Hugh McFadden, the former uh, progressive conservative leader, as deputy leader. And uh, Ted Falk is, is well known as well in sort of PC circles of Manitoba. What, what else can you add about uh, those two gentlemen? Yeah, the uh, interesting thing on the Provence nomination was there was definitely an heir apparent to, uh, to Vic Taves. It was Calvin Gertson, who's the uh, MLA for Steinbach. He passed on the nomination, and then it was followed up by several others passing. So. Uh, Falk was definitely not, uh, you know, the first choice, but uh, you can't understate he was the chair of the Steinbeck Credit Union, the largest in uh, Manitoba, and uh, mm -hmm. it's a, just a really important uh, role, not only in, in Steinbeck and Provence, but throughout the province. So uh, definitely a, a high-profile guy bringing some uh, business, uh, business background uh, to uh, Parliament for his constituents. Now, clearly there was, an, for the Conservatives, an uncomfortably high number of voters in these two Manitoba ridings that were looking for an alternative to Stephen Harper, wanted to send a message to Stephen Harper and choose your pick. But rather than choose a new Democrat, they chose a liberal. And just thinking now from the opposition side, 
The New Democrats can't be happy that they did so dismally in the Manitoba ridings. And obviously the Liberals are thrilled to bits that they, uh, they did so, particularly in Brandon Suris, so fabulously well. Well, you know, and we saw the Liberals in the four by-elections either uh, meet or exceed their 2008 showing. So it's definitely uh, a good return to normalcy for them. Uh, in Manitoba with the uh, NDP results, the NDP results, you know, they grew in Toronto Center. They held fairly steady, uh, a slight growth, I believe, in Barassa. But in Manitoba, I think there were some factors with the provincial NDP who uh, they brought in a uh, very unpopular uh, uh, hike to the provincial sales tax. There's uh, uh, some back and forth in the legislature that this actually breaks the uh, uh, taxpayer protection laws that would require a uh, referendum. It hasn't even passed uh, the legislature because the opposition was able to stall it. So it's uh, definitely uh, getting a lot of traction. So I think, you know, if you look back to 1988, it was a great election nationally for the NDP under uh, Ed Broadbent. But in Manitoba, just uh, Howard Pauley's government had been thrown out in a very dramatic fashion a few months uh, prior, and uh, the uh, federal NDP lost Winnipeg North and Winnipeg Centre, which had been previously very strong ridings for them, to the Liberals. So uh, the, uh, there is a history in Manitoba of uh, provincial New Democratic uh, government uh, impacting the federal party's results in Manitoba ridings. Uh, we touched on this as well last night. Let's bring it up again, and that is maybe the bigger picture for Manitoba looking ahead to 2015. And, and I bring it up in this context that there were some conservatives in Ottawa who were saying, even before the results came in, saying, you know, it, it, it may not be such a bad thing if we lose Brandon Sewers because the party needs a bit of a wake-up call. That There's some work to be done, uh, some, some relationships to be improved upon in Manitoba. And here we're thinking of making sure that ridings like uh, uh, Shelley Glover's riding in St. Boniface, that that stays in the blue column. I'm thinking Rod Bernosia's riding in the south of Winnipeg stays blue. There, there's going to be some fights that Tory's going to have on their hands elsewhere in Manitoba come 2015. Oh, absolutely. You know, Joyce Bateman uh, uh, squeaked by Anita Neville in Winnipeg South Centre. There is some redistribution there that will benefit her getting some of Rod Bernouge's riding, but that's going to be a hot one to watch with uh, the liberal results in Provence and uh, Brandon Suris being uh, quite strong. It should be easier to recruit a, a st stronger uh, local candidate in ridings like South Centre and Winnipeg South against Bernouge. And obviously, uh, Shelley Glover, uh, the deputy, former Deputy Mayor of Winnipeg, Dan Vandell, who's still a city councillor for a large part of the St. Boniface uh, federal riding, uh, has already announced uh, his intentions to uh, run for the Liberal nomination. He's uh, traditionally been a New Democrat, so there's definitely uh, going to be some uh, strong local support mm. for him. And uh, there should be a lot of worried uh, uh, Conservative MPs in Winnipeg. Uh, there's you know, time to uh, focus, time to build relationships and uh, build your team up, but uh, obviously uh, reason for concern. Uh, any last final thoughts on uh, all four by-elections last night? Any surprises for you there, Michael? You know, what I was really looking for was just uh, comparing things to 2011 and seeing the Liberals uh, grow to or exceed their 2008 levels is definitely a strong point for them. Uh, the Conservatives, all things considered, holding on to Brandon Suris was definitely a, a huge win. And uh, the Bloc uh, not growing back to their 2008 levels, shrinking actually from their 2011 uh, levels, is obviously uh, their support in Barassa is going to be a problem for them and it's uh, quite uh, positive for the NDP that they'll be able to hold uh, some of the orange crush that was seen you know they they grew in Toronto Centre quite handily with redistribution there. That's going to be a, a new seat for them in Toronto. Um, they uh, held strong in Quebec, which should help protect uh, a lot of those uh, surprise MPs they won uh, in 2011. And, uh, you know, so not a lot to learn, but uh, definitely uh, signs of strength in certain ways for every leader. Mm -hmm. All right, Michael Diamond in Toronto tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me.